Hi everyone, I'm Andy Eglinton and I'm a BMO admissions expert. Today I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare for the MCAT for non-science majors. Before I start, please make sure that you are in a quiet place and so that you can easily focus and make sure that you are ready to take lots of notes. What I'll be covering in this podcast is firstly, do you need a science background to get into med school? Why does the MCAT have science sections? What are the courses that are generally recommended that you take before taking the MCAT? What to do if you have not covered the content of these courses at school? And then finally, a step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare for the MCAT. So do you need a science background to get into med school? Well, many students think that this is the case, that you must have a science background to get into med school. But the reality is that most schools in Canada and the US do not require a science background for you to apply for med school. So in your undergrad, you really should be doing a course that you love. Doing a course that you love has many benefits. Firstly being that you'll enjoy the content and most likely engage more, and that you'll also be able to get a higher GPA which would be super beneficial when you are applying for med school. So the answer is no, you do not need to have a science background. There are, however, two caveats to that. The first is that med schools generally have got prerequisites for application, and these vary by school. But in general, these prerequisites are often two semesters of biology with lab, two semesters of physics with lab, two semesters of chem with lab, and one semester of maths, two semesters of English, and sometimes additional courses could be biochem, one semester with lab, um, or potentially psychology, physiology, or anatomy. These do vary by school. So we do recommend that you double check the schools that you do want to apply to and find out if there are specific science prerequisites that you do need to take. If you are a non-science major, potentially you'll have some of these courses as options as part of your course. So we do recommend that you then take those courses. The first thing to note is that you need to check prerequisites. The other thing to note is that medicine and science do go somewhat hand in hand. So if you really, really are not enjoying science at all, or you don't enjoy science courses at all, it's important for you to determine, is there a reason, like was it potentially a teacher or a professor, or is there something you know that has kind of driven you away from that? Or is it that you really do not enjoy engaging with that content? Because if it's the latter, that is something to consider moving into med school because the courses that you would have done in your undergrad or that are at least prerequisites for med school are generally the more basic courses of these sciences. And as you progress further into med school and, and into your career as a physician, you will of course be using science a lot. So it is important that you enjoy it. Why does the MCAT have science sections in it. Well, as I've just mentioned, medicine and science go hand in hand. So ultimately, it is really important that physicians or those who are going to study to become physicians do have an interest and or an aptitude in science so that they will be able to move through these courses and they have the capacity to do this in med school and in their career in the future. So the MCAT overall assesses you know, med students' aptitudes for the areas that med schools have found to be of the most concern and the most important to them moving forward. And science is one of those. So it is really important that there is a science section in the MCAT so that med schools can understand how prepared or what kind of aptitudes students have for the science sections when they are considering whether they would be a good fit for their school. What courses are recommended that you take before taking the MCAT? This is particularly important to consider if you do come from a non-science background, considering the science sections in the MCAT. So I'm just gonna cover the courses that are recommended now. The first is two semesters of biology, two semesters of physics, two semesters of general or inorganic chemistry, two semesters of organic chemistry, one semester of biochemistry, or one semester of psychology, one semester of sociology. An additional course that may be helpful are physiology and anatomy. If you do not have those courses, what should you do? Well, there are a few options. The first is that you could do a post-bac program. So a post-bac program can be super helpful and is a path that more and more students are taking at the moment. BMO does have many blogs on these programs and if you think it will be beneficial for you. 
And ultimately what happens when you do do these programs is that you cover a lot of the prerequisite content. So basically it's a one to two year course that gives you an option to A, improve your GPA, and B, make sure that you've covered all the prerequisites for med school. So this is a post-baccalaureate program. So doing a post-bac is the one option that you can do. The second option that you can do is get a tutor <laughs> to enroll in programs through online courses. A lot of the time, this can actually be super beneficial because if you are doing it of your own accord or you really are, you know, really super focused on these courses only because this is what you really need to cover before you start studying or, you know, as you start studying for the MCAT, this is one option that you can take is to enroll in programs like our BMO program or find a tutor and that can specifically help you with those courses, take online courses, things like that. And the third thing that you can do is to jump into research experience in those fields. So you would have gained some research experience of some kind in your undergrad, and whether or not you've done additional research experience, of course, that will depend on your experience. But picking up research in the science field is often a hands-on way to gain experience and learn about those subjects. At the same time, gain really valuable research experience which can add really strongly to your application for med school. A step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare for the MCAT for non-science majors. So the first thing that you want to be thinking about is when do you want to write the MCAT and when to start studying. So many students will want to write the MCAT at the end of their second undergraduate year. It allows you to spend some time preparing during your undergraduate year. It also gives you a little bit of time afterwards in case you need to rewrite it for any reason. Obviously, we want to help you to avoid that, but it is potentially a situation. And so that's why that is a good time to write it if that is possible. If you have decided on that as a time to write it or any time really, you then need to think about when you want to start studying. Well, the reality is that your undergrad is part of your studying for the MCAT and you need to think about that. When you look at the recommended courses for the MCAT, which I covered a little bit earlier, you'll see that obviously a lot of those will be covered in undergrad courses. If you're a non-science major, a reminder about my recommendation to pick up the courses that might be optional or not part of your course, the ones that are recommended for MCAT, and to double check the prerequisites for med school and make sure that you've covered those in your courses as well. And if you haven't, then you need to jump into some research experience in the sciences field to help you gain experience, or you need to pick up these courses on the side, get yourself a tutor, think about how you can gain an understanding of the content. So generally, once you've covered all the prerequisite content, we say it takes about two to 300 hours to study for the MCAT, uh, or do we generally recommend at least six months. This obviously again depends on your knowledge of the courses and how easy or difficult it is for you to study. So it is really important that you give yourself a lot of time and enough time so that you don't feel panicked and that you feel that you have enough time to prepare effectively. So once you've given yourself enough time, once you've thought very seriously about how to pick up the additional course content and you've taken steps to do that, to get you to the recommended place for, like once you've taken the recommended courses for MCAT or you've taken steps to fully make sure that you've covered the overall content, the next thing that we recommend that you do is do an initial assessment. That is a diagnostic test. And what we recommend that you do is you actually do a full MCAT exam. So that's the full seven and a half hour exam that you do through the AMC and you need to do this in a proper timed environment so that it is realistic. And we recommend that you do this before you start studying any additional things or you start putting your study schedule together because this will really give you an indication as to what's missing and where you should focus your time because once you've started your study schedule, you'll be dedicating a lot of time to this and you want to make sure you're studying as effectively as possible. So once you've taken the diagnostic test, this will allow you to see really where your weaknesses and where your strengths are and which subjects that you need to work on. If you're a non-science major, potentially you'll have to be working more on the CP sections or the BB sections. You'll have to see based on your diagnostic test where you focus your time. Once you've done the diagnostic test, the next step would be to structure your study plan. 
the BMO. We have a full MCAT program where we put a study program together for you based on your diagnostic test. This is super useful because what it really does is it allocates you time every week to do specific content review. It allows you to work through some lesson plans, some quizzes, and also encourages you to do regular practice tests. And so studying, like putting a full study plan together is really important because it is a lot of content. It's an overwhelming amount. I mean, it's a seven and a half hour exam. So it's important that you feel like you're very structured and also that you're keeping track of your progress over time. Once you've done that, you would need to gather your study materials. So this would be relevant course notes, textbooks, particularly you're focusing on science, potentially to do science textbooks. You might be involved, you might be doing an additional tutor program. You might be doing an additional research experience. This is where you would be focusing on the different course content related to the different areas that you're working on originally and we encourage you the amc has got fantastic resources here we encourage you to use their resources and also to find additional content that is relevant to what you specifically need to work on the other thing is that you should be making time to read to read 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 the cars section of the mcat requires an intense ability to really understand and interpret very difficult text and so we encourage you to be reading things that you're not really familiar with journals articles books that you would generally find difficult and we encourage you to read the 30 to 60 minutes per day and um, while you are studying for the MCAT then once you've gathered your study materials the next thing would be to get ready for the MCAT format and how you do that is to take practice exams so this means even if you still have a weaker science section and uh, you would be focusing on that through your your additional studying and through your overall study schedule you'll be focusing on your weaker sections but you will still be regularly taking practice exams if your exams still a while away it might be every three weeks as it gets closer you would decrease that to one to two weeks it would depend on the time that you have available and how long it is until your exam then the time that you have available every week and we do think it's really important that you take practice exams. And one of the reasons for that is that it's really important to understand speed versus accuracy. This is a big element of the MCAT. Like you need to work very quickly and it's obviously a lot of both content and passive based questions, but you need to work very quickly. Working with a full practice test allows you to understand where that balance is between speed and accuracy because you need to get answers correct, but you also need to work quickly. And that is one of the major reasons that we recommend taking full practice tests. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast on how to prepare for the MCAT as a non-science major. A reminder that we have got a whole host of resources available here at BMO. We have blogs, podcasts, and videos all related to the MCAT, specifically related to the science section, helping non-science majors in a range of ways. So if you're looking for something further, just pop over to our website, bmoacademicconsulting.com and see if there's something there that might help you. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this and have a lovely day.